to highlight the basic idea behind his theory, Nozick came, came up with this example, this thought experiment. In his day, he used a very famous basketballer called Wilt Chamberlain. Um, now, Chamberlain was actually a, a super well-known player, kind of the Michael Jordan of his times, but even Michael Jordan, I know, is getting a bit old for a few of you out there, so why don't we update it? Uh, broaden it from the US, internationalize it, and use the example as if it was uh, Lionel Messi. Okay. So the starting point for Nozek is for people to assume whatever they want in terms of the rules for, for society, that we have this just society. So we could assume that everyone has uh, exactly the same, right? Let's assume everyone has exactly the same resources under that definition of justice or fairness. Then, uh, imagine that there's a famous sports person. Let's go with Lionel Messi. And Messi signs a contract where he'll get $5 from the price of each ticket. Now, we could even take this further and say, let's not say they even have to purchase it, but let's, let's just say each buyer is asked to and does and agree. So the buyer agrees to put an extra $5 into a box with Messi's name on it. So we've got our box, right? And as you buy the ticket, you put $5 into the box. So if a million people bought tickets over the season and did that, then the sports person would have $5 million and each spectator would have $5 less. So the result would be greater inequality. However, you can't really say that that's unjust, right? There's been no coercion and the spectators freely pay the $5. And any attempt to take the money off Messi or the sports star would be considered unjust un unless uh, the sports star, unless Messi agrees, okay? What we can see here is this idea that if we have voluntary exchange in a society, can we really consider it to be unjust if it results in an unequal distribution? And so what are the key criticisms of Nozick's approach? Well, the first one is that we actually need government for some things. Um, defense, um, the upholding of at least property rights with, to enforce this system of Nozick, um, the rule of law, etc. So there are these basic minimums. And one of the challenges that we have in society is that we argue about what these basic minimums should be. You know, what is the minimal size of government? Nozick and the libertarian view uh, pushes to make this as minimal as, as possible but we still need some form of government, so there's still going to be some coercion. So we're just arguing about the degree, really. A second key criticism of Nozick's approach is that this, uh, and, and he actually acknowledged this in some of his later work, that in, under some circumstances, we still might get an unjust distribution. He was particularly thinking um, about inheritances, etc., where people really didn't, haven't done anything uh, in order to gain the inequality the, the, the advantage in inequality that they may have. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into this libertarian or entitlement approach to just distribution. The idea that provided we freely exchange or create, people should be allowed um, to accumulate the resources, the benefits, etc., to themselves um, because that maximizes the liberty uh, of people in society. Next off, we're going to move uh, into another theory that does put a lot of emphasis on liberty, but has some different ideas about how a society would arrange itself. Okay, that will be Rawls's uh, approach to justice, and we'll do that next.